Um, David Beebe, for those of you who had a chance to meet him last night from Marriott International, is an Emmy Award winning digital content producer. I've known him since back in his days at ABC, at Disney ABC. Uh, he has also worked with DirecTV, with Showtime, and really unusual, a major hospitality corporation based in Bethesda, Maryland, or in the suburbs of DC, reaching into the Hollywood community. Um, David's gonna talk to us today about a really innovative new approach to content and messaging for the Marriott Corporation. Please welcome to the stage, David Beebe. While David takes the stage, uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about the wireless, Omni uh, meetings, all uppercase, adapt. And I'm going to use uh, the data that I have, personalized data that I have, All and right. storytelling. This will tell the story. You went out with Mel last yeah. night. I'm going to assume I did. that's needed. Do not go out in this town with Mel, or any town. <laughs> so thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. We don't, we don't want this to be a conversation with you and I, but you know, hopefully we'll, we'll uh, try to get to some of the big issues. Um, as I said just a moment ago, uh, eight months ago, large hospitality company, what, 18, 19 brands you guys have? 19 brands now, yeah. 19 brands from like Ritz <laughs> to the Renaissance to Gaylord Hotels. Now that you guys are managing, uh, goes to LA and finds you. What was the strategy there? Uh, I think if you, if you look at the history of our company, uh, you know, we started in 1927 as a root beer stand uh, in Washington, DC. And innovation's always been part of the company. So they opened it up, nine seats, uh, it was summertime, business was good. As winter came, they realized people weren't gonna have root beer, right? They didn't want cold drinks. So they went to the Mexican embassy and they learned how to make tamales and chili. And uh, from there, the company grew. So innovation's always been uh, in the history. We were uh, the first company to put food on airlines, provide all the food for uh, World War II. Um, so I think when we That's launched- By the way, great brand story. Yeah, a lot of, well, yeah, a lot of great stories there. Um, but so if you look at the, the history of the company, we've always been adapting. I told Rick I was going to throw that in there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so when we announced the launch of the Global Studio, it was really about two things. One was we understand today that consumers, you know, control how they interact with brands. And we understand they don't want interruptive advertising anymore, that it doesn't work. So we went out and said, not only did we launch a studio, um, but we're doing direct deals with creators. Um, and we have projects. So it wasn't just saying we were gonna do content marketing, it was actually doing it. Um, we're also uh, challenged, I think we have a harder job as a portfolio company because we have 19 brands. It's like 19 different companies to deal with, right? right? And then marketing the portfolio. And then as a global company with 4,500 hotels in 78 countries, um, you know, how do you scale that as well? So it's more challenging than Pepsi or Red Bull or American Express who have one brand. But it was really about going out and say that we understand how to interact with today's consumer and really growing a relationship with them and stop selling. So the strategic premise, because you went over that pretty fast, if I can back you up just a second and rewind to that strategic premise, which is traditional advertising doesn't work or isn't working and we need a different kind of approach. Yeah, it's what, about... Yeah. What was the inception of that uh, from Marriott's perspective before they hired you? Did they suddenly, aha, our advertising isn't working? Or what was the genesis for that? Well, I think uh, Arnie, our CEO, is, uh, he's three years in now. He's right. the first non-Marriott family member to run the company. Um, he certainly realizes, you know, how to interact with consumers and that traditional advertising doesn't work. We look at, you know, 80% of people are skipping 30-second spots on television. Uh, banner ads, they don't click on anything intrusive, they don't want. So, um, Karen Tampone, our global marketing officer, came from Disney ABC. I worked with her there. Um, so, a lot of media people starting to come in and really about how do we engage consumers and provide value first. And content is the way to do that for us. Um, so, we are shifting a lot of our dollars from traditional advertising into content marketing. Content that informs or entertains and everything in between. But the idea that we are going to provide value to the consumer first and they will provide value to us later. So rather than being about us, right? right? Look at our rooms, look at our pool, look at our spa, whatever. How do I provide value? How do I solve a problem for a consumer? How do I entertain them, inform them how to travel better? How do I evoke an emotion and build a relationship with them first? Create that value exchange over and over. So 18 to 19, does this mean you're, you're producing independent content 
for each of those 19 brands? Yeah. So we market the portfolio, because uh, a lot of people don't know that Ritz Carlton's on our portfolio, or Renaissance, or Edition with Ian Schrager. The idea that we have a hotel, whether it's leisure or business, that fits your needs, whatever you're looking for. So we'll market luxury, lifestyle, business, that, that level of segment, segmentation. Um, but then we'll also market each individual brand as well. So there's a B2B side, which is the business traveler, right? And yep. there's a B2C side, which is the leisure traveler, right? <clears throat> yep. And you're creating content for both of those sides. Yeah, and we also are targeting, you know, groups. Group sales is huge, weddings. There's so much content that can be made, not just around the brands, but the reasons that people travel, their passions, what they discover, music, art. So it's about building content around all those segments and verticals um, and owning the travel lifestyle. Right, so if Red Bull is action sports, right. Right, we want to own the travel lifestyle. From the time they're even thinking about traveling, we want to be there giving them content, what to do in a city, where should they go. And then once we do that, you know, keep them coming until they book a room, and then even after their trip. So was there a relevance? For, I mean, I know some of those brands are pretty dusty, right? In that, in that suite of 19 brands. Was, it a, was the, one of the drivers that you can sort of increase brand relevance or brand health measures based on you know, going to a content approach versus a traditional advertising approach? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is, is lifting and shifting perception right. of, of you know, Marriott hotels. Um, a lot of people think of Marriott as dependable, reliable, right. you know what you're going to get, right? right. Um, but if you look at our new hotels, the flagship brand, um, it's all about the experience. So the room is great, right? We want to have a great experience there, but it's about what else can you do in the hotel? Food, beverage, um, everything around it. Um, so that, that's the change. This is the first time the company's ever led with marketing, believe it or not. It's been an operations management finance company. Right. Um, and you didn't really have to market hotels before. You know, up until the 90s, uh, people wanted a hotel, they wanted a great room, and, and that was it. They, they knew what they were going to get until the introduction of lifestyle brands. And it was all about the experience. So this is really, I think, three years in, leading with marketing. Um, which is new and exciting. So, so that's, that's, that's part of the change of why we've been so bold and just go out and do it. So did your CMO have to go to your CEO and say, you know, we're not going to bail on paid advertising, but we're going to invest in a content studio and here's what that looks like? Yeah, I think, um, you know, Arnie completely gets it. Uh, Mr. Marriott, who's still at the company every day, right. um, completely gets it. You sit down with him and we talk about someone who has stories. Right. He'll just tell you story after sure. story of of growing up in the hotels and working with his dad who founded it. Um, but everyone really understood it. So our approach, this is not like some group sitting down the hall. Right. Like you'll see it a lot of brands. You know, Joe or whoever down the hall is trying to do this content thing. Right. I mean, we are leading the company with content marketing. It is the focus of um, the company, how to engage with consumers. Um, so it's, it is bold. We've got a very large team. We're um, growing it out in each continent. Uh, we have real-time marketing, which we'll talk about. Um, so we have a brand newsroom that we've launched. We're launching them um, around the world. They're all connected. And those are social, largely socially focused? Uh, social listening, um, mm -hmm. staff 24-7, right. connected to customer care as well. Um, but the idea that you know, marketing is no longer Monday through Friday to 5, we've got, right. you know, every brand has consumers around the world engaging with their brand and the opportunity um, to listen to what they're saying and respond to them the opportunity to identify pop culture converse, you know, um, right. trends and engage with it. Not that you have to engage with everyone, sure, because um, brands will fail when they try to do that. Right. Um, but it's a big difference as a consumer. When someone posts a photo on our Facebook or one of our brands and they say having a great time at whatever brand it is, when a brand recognizes that and likes it or says, you know, glad you're having a great time, that makes a big emotional connection with the consumer. Mm -hmm. It shows that we're listening. So uh, we'll get to the social in a minute. I want to rewind. So I understand the strategy. What's the creative and the, the sort of creation and production model for the studio? Uh, we do a lot um, with direct partnership partnerships. So we'll partner with YouTubers, Instagram, influencers in the space. Uh, we're not producing the majority, or with the exception of some um, destination content, it's all partnering with agencies. Um, or people in the field, our employees. We have 300,000 pe 300, people worldwide, so we um, lean into them to create content for us at the hotel level. Um, it's really about direct relationships with the talent. So we sign exclusive development deals. Uh, people like uh, Jack Harries, who's based in London. He's got 5 million subscribers on his channel, Jack Scap. He's out shooting documentaries uh, for us right now. 
uh, in Japan. Um, Casey Neistat, um, Jerome Girard we have a deal with. So they're exclusive to the hotel industry and we bring them into uh, corporate headquarters. They do brand immersion. And it's about building a relationship with them. So in a way you're like a mini studio yeah, we that's wanna, going out yeah. and hiring you know, filmmakers, short video makers, YouTubers to create content for any number of these brands. Yeah, and I think, I think it's important though to highlight that direct relationship because here's what happens typically with a the brand. They'll do a campaign, I'm trying to kill that word, right. at our headquarters, right. Right. but they'll, their agency will go to an agency to go to an agency to get an influencer or whatever, right? right? There's no direct relationship there. We want to have that direct relationship where over time, during that exclusivity and beyond, um, that you start to see them in multiple brands and you start to see them doing a lot of content. It makes a big difference as a, as a viewer and a content creator to have that direct relationship with the brand and not just like, oh, I'm doing this thing with this brand and go do it and, and right. go buy. It's not one and done. Right. So that's more like the Red Bull model, right? Where you're, you're sort of you know, um, signing those people to multi-year deals yeah. and, 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 they, and they're working for you. Are those exclusive deals or are they? Uh... They're exclusive deals in the uh, hospitality um, industry. So right. Uh, Red Bull has, you know, athletes. GoPro has athletes. We have Marriott Travelers, we call them. Right. Um, and as they're out creating content, as they're traveling on their own, part of the deal is obviously they get hotel rooms for free. So they're, sure. out, they're creating content for us naturally. We don't even ask them to. Right. So um, we've talked about the creation model. What about production now? Do you own all that apparatus? Are there, there must be efficiencies that you're getting for, from production across, you know, across properties where you can sort of you know, sort of create and use across brands, are you able to do that? Or, or are you doing everything on a, on, a, on a sort of brand, individual brand basis from a production standpoint? Um, we, we really lean on the influencers to produce everything. So like I said, we don't have a, a physical studio in house. Right, no about, edit base, none of that. It's about partnering with um, storytellers. Right. You know, people who get it. I think when a brand tries to tell its own story, it gets in the way, mm -hmm. right? And it becomes about the brand. Right. So that's why we partner with people who know how to create content, who know you know, how to do a beginning, middle, and end, how to create a great story, and do what they do best. Um, and we literally, we, we'll sit down with them, we'll say, what do you want to do? And uh, we'll, we'll land on the ideas. Um, and there's destination content. You know, the entertainment stuff gets a lot of the attention. So the short films, the TV shows we have, um, the webisodes, that stuff gets the coverage, but we have a big destination site that we've launched on Marriott.com. Right. Um, so when we launched, I said, you know, we want to be the world's largest publisher of travel content. And people said, well, how do you do that? And I said, well, if you look at our distribution channels, Marriott.com has 40 million uniques a month. Uh, we have 48 million reward members that today log into a platform to look at their account status. Mm -hmm, sure. No content there. Uh, we like I said, we just launched content on Marriott.com. Social, we can push uh, in room, uh, in room magazines and beyond. So you add up all those eyeballs, right? We are the world's largest publisher of content. We just haven't activated it yet, but Got we're it. quickly doing that. In terms of the impression base, I get that. So uh, the question about branded content is always how you know, forced is the brand into the content? And uh, you know, consumers are pretty smart, particularly young consumers. They sniff that out as a, as a, as a commercial or a, a sponsored message, and, they, and they're on to the next thing. How are you dealing with that? Can you, you got some examples? You know, anything you want to show? Yeah, we'll, sh we'll show the trailer for Two Bellmen, which is our uh, first short film that's coming out. Uh, releases on March 10th. And for us, the hotel or the brand always plays a character in the story. So it's, it's the, the thing that enabled the story to happen, it's the backdrop. There's right. not an integration ever in any of our content. So you don't see anything cheesy like, oh, welcome to the JW Marriott, here's your key card. Right? Right. That, we don't do that. Um, it's all about how does the brand just be part of the story. Um, so we can uh, pull up the trailer for uh, Two Bellman, which is... I'll do my Jimmy Fallon here, roll the trailer. Yeah, I'll, I'll set up the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the story here, it's, it's based on an art heist, so we're going to do three of these. Um, art heist in LA, attempted art heist. Um, the two bellmen end up saving the day, the hotel's the hero. Uh, we'll do the second one at, uh, in Dubai, at the JW oh, nice. Marriott there. It'll be around food and beverage drama. And then uh, we'll do the third one probably in China somewhere. The idea, you watch all three of those films together, you start to see the reach of that particular brand and all the locations it's in. Look around, look at these people. They come in, they go out, and we make that flow.
lifeblood of this hotel. Without us, everything would be chaos. Look, man, I'm pretty sure people could figure out how to carry their own bags without chaos. us. So no Marriott logo, no Marriott branding and anything? Well, there, there's, you'll see, you saw in the end there, there when that sliding glass, that door opens, you saw right. JW Marriott, but it was right. natural. It's part of the story, right? Got it. We never, we didn't insert it, we didn't stop the camera and zoom in on the logo or sure. pan into it for three seconds like a lot of brands do. It was just a great storytelling. Uh, we partnered with a group called Substance Over Hype to produce it. They're a parkour right. group. Uh, the founder, uh, William Spencer, he's the real Spider-Man in the suit that does all the tricks. Um, and they are great storytellers. This is what they do. And once we locked on the creative, we let them do what they do best, which is create content and tell stories. So really cool, cool piece of creative, uh, you know, very endemic uh, integration of your, of your property. How are you measuring it? We look at uh, the, f the first stage is around content, right? So we're, we're shifting perception of the brand. Um, so when you look at stuff, the short film or stuff we're doing on Snapchat, yep. uh, we, uh, Casey Neistat, Brittany Furlon, um, Sean Duras, they go traveling around the world. They take over our Snapchat channel for a weekend. Um, highest engagement ever on social. I mean, most engaged um, users. And they're creating content for us, but it's natural. So we measure what people are saying, essentially. So views are important, but time spent. And how are we shifting perception of the brand? All the comments um, on Twitter driving to Snapchat are say, it's so cool that Marriott or whatever brand it is is doing this. It's so cool that they're working with my favorite influencer. Um, I'm gonna go meet them at the Marriott. I've never considered Marriott before. That's how we're measuring that conversation first. Um, and then second, we measure community, right? So how are we building likes, subscribers, right. um, followers, email signups, Marriott reward members, and then finally commerce. How are we putting heads in beds? Um, and then also licensing the content. So we have a TV show today called uh, Navigator Live uh, that airs on Access TV. It's a cable channel, uh, about 38 million homes. Uh, it's a half hour show. We take an artist, we drop them into a city. They discover the city, where to go, what to eat, all that. They do a, a performance for their fans. And uh, we film all that into a nice half hour show. Again, where the hotel is part of it, but it's just the backdrop. Um, so we own that IP. We, then took those six half hour episodes and resell them into other digital distributors who need content. And it's valuable to them because it's not viewed as branded content. Right, so that's it's coming from the, a brand. More of the Red Bull model, right? Right. Of licensing that content. So there's a whole media and licensing model as well Got that it. we're launching. So that, 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 I get it from the brand health measures and brand lift standpoint. How do you create the connective tissue to heads and beds? Because that's what your C-suite's gonna wanna know. So what, what's the formula for that? Or, or are you mostly focusing on increasing relevance first? Uh, it's relevance, shifting perception, awareness of the portfolio. Um, the, the destination content on Marriott.com um, is really the, where we focus on heads and beds, so we track that, there's links. The idea there that uh, we use the power of Marriott.com and SEO and, and um, rankings in Google, so when someone's searching a city, what to do, where to go, our content comes up, we get them into our world, right? it's a whole different section of the website, and as they sort of engage with the content, we start to sort of lift booking opportunities. Right, so you're emerging your, your booking engine right. as they get right. more engaged through that process? Right, and then af after they book, we surface that content on the um, confirmation page, the uh, confirmation email, and then the, the pre-arrival email. So they're getting hit with content three times. But it's relevant to them, it's in context. Right. They're going to that city, here's all this great content, and it's not your typical um, listicles or whatever. Uh, we partner with Sonia Gill, she's creating a lot of destination content right. for us. Um, it's infographics, it's a nice mix of content. So, and if I want to grab and embed a piece of that content on my blog, is it embeddable or is it, uh, are, are, you, are you setting it free? Yeah, it's all, um, all shareable, embeddable. Uh, the destination site launches on uh, March 4th. Um, so it's all social and everything, but it, it, it looks like a uh, travel magazine, like a lifestyle magazine. It's not, it does not look like what Marriott.com looks like. Right. Um, you, you can't even really tell that you're in Marriott.com unless you look at the URL. So most CMOs see the value of shares and likes and brand lift. Um, can you, when you start to talk about increase in likes and shares to the rest of the C-suite, is that, is that resonating around this for them? Are they, are they behind it? 
Yeah, I, I think uh, we're probably rare that everyone understands why we're doing this. It's not Got convincing it. them. It's, um, it's a lot of education, Yeah. right? But it's not convincing them, here's what we need to do and here's why we're doing it. They're, they're already past that. Got it. They know to be relevant, uh, we have to lead with creative and content. Um, and that's how you engage with people. And it, it's simple, when we, when we show results, um, and, and really true engagement, they, they see the value of that. Right. So similarly, we, for Fiat and for you know, other brands that we work on, like Harley Davidson and others, same challenges. Yep. How do you create that connective tissue between the content and you know, selling a product or booking a room in your case? Um, so it sounds like you've got buy-in across swim lanes, which is really you know, one, of the, one of the toughest things for any marketer to do. And, um, just applaud your efforts. I'd love to open it up to the floor, if, sure. if that's okay, to some questions. Ask the hard questions. Certainly, some hard <laughs> questions for David around how they're getting content done at uh, JW Marriott. Anybody have a question? So, uh, understanding the your Can you give us your name, where oh, you from? Eric Korsh, I'm at uh, Digitas. Yes. So, I understand the Marriott strategy. What led you guys to think that consumers are willing or want to engage with you to get this kind of content? Because there's clearly a lot of other places to get great travel content. We saw, say, Budweiser try to be comedy owners you know, in the early 2000s. So what made you guys, what was the insight that said, we can do this and consumers will accept it and seek it out from us? Um, I, I think it's authentic for us to own the travel lifestyle. Um, we're, not, we're not trying to be uh, in a space that you know, we shouldn't be in. And um, I think for us, it's, again, it goes back to, to be relevant. Um, you look at companies that refuse to innovate and they're either no longer around or um, not doing well in business. And this, this, the statistics are very clear. I mean, people are not engaging with traditional advertising. So uh, we're still learning and adapting and you know, changing creative and content as we go. But it's, it's for us, it's um, why not do it in order to be relevant this, this is what we believe is the way to engage with consumers and, again, provide value to them first. It's not about us anymore. People don't want to hear us talking about how great our hotels are, what we offer. They want us to provide value to them at the right time, at the right place, on the right screen, context, all of that. If we do that over and over and over again at scale, we build that relationship with them. And then we can ask them for the sell after we've um, provided value to them. But the question of do you have the credibility to entertain as a brand, you said, you know, did you have any research or anything you guys did to right. the, sort of... Those answers were all your point of view, which are totally legitimate. It's, is there, what's that research on the consumer side saying, this, I am missing this. There's something I'm not getting, and you guys can fill that gap. I, I think it's providing content in a, in a different way. Again, we have, we have the reach and scale to do it, and that's why it's not... We're not we, we are not creating the content as Marriott. We're partnering with influencers and people who uh, do this every day. Um, so it's not, hey, come watch our short film. We're, right. We are partnering with, in that uh, film, there's YouTube stars or TV stars, there's film stars. Uh, we're using their audiences to be authentic. So it's not Marriott talking to you. It's people that you know um, and just great storytelling. And if you happen to like the, the film, we hope you engage with our brand. And you're just a role, a character in, the, we're just, in whatever they're right. doing anyway. Yep. Did that answer your question? Partly. How are you? <laughs> I mean, it's, I think it's a really interesting thing. I'm not yep. trying to knock it. I'm trying to understand how do you deliver to the consumer. Continue. Yeah. Here, Dorier. Um, Hi, Tamara question. Kruger from YouTube. Hi, David. It's nice to see you. Um, so, and by the way, you are wor working with some of my favorite YouTube creators, so it's great to see. And I noticed that some of the content actually does live on YouTube or on those creators' channels. And, and that was going to be my question, which I think ties in, which is, do you find that you're sort of balancing kind of what's living on your own channels with what you have on the creators' channel so that they're driving? Are you asking them to have a piece of content on their own channel and then reference something else that they're working on that's going to live on your site? Or how are you sort of best maximizing the... Um, it, it's a case-by-case -case basis. So it depends on who the influencer is, what the content is, um, and really what the strategy is around it. So Two Bellman, for example, is a franchise property. It lives, it doesn't live on JW YouTube. It's got its own uh, YouTube channel. It's got its own social channels. 
uh, the influencer, the, the, the talent in it promotes to everything to Bellman. It's not JW. Um, with Jack, for example, you know, he's four or five million subscribers. The documentaries he's creating are on his channel. And then he's going to promote to our channel uh, with some outtakes and stuff. So it, it just varies. Um, I, I don't think there's sort of a, a hard answer, right or wrong. It's really what, what is the content um, and sort of what do those viewers expect um, from those channels? And is it authentic for uh, Marriott to push out Jack's documentaries or is it more authentic for him to do it on his channel? And in that case, it's more authentic for him because that's what he does. And your brand is just really just a char an actor in the cast, right? Yeah, it's an actor. I mean, at the top, Jack says, uh, Marriott essentially is enabling me to go travel the world to do what I love to do, right. to create content. And that's the only thing in that. There's no integration at that's all. That's his brief, right? It's just him out shooting these beautiful documentaries, um, destination content, essentially. Um, but it's, again, it's on his channel, and he mentions it at the top. And his viewers appreciate that. They're saying, again, that's cool that Marriott is enabling my favorite YouTuber to go do what they do. And there's the connection. You know, in Two Bellman, obviously, there's more JW in it. And so there's a wide variance of how involved the brand is and where it's coming. It just, it's a case-by-case -case basis. Other questions? There's one back here. You, um, you made a little bit of a joke, but I think it's a real tension um, that you're trying to kill the brand campaigns. Um, so talk to us a little bit of how you balance the brand campaigns um, with all this content. And how do you know what percent are you at, and how um, how do you guys balance the two? Um, I, I think the idea of a campaign, you know, something that lasts for three months, uh, you you go out, you do this creative content, whatever it is, you build an audience, you engage, great measurement, and then you like go home, right? And the campaign ends. So I'll give you an example: Courtyard, uh, we're the official hotel of the NFL. Uh, during the NFL season, we do all this great stuff and then we don't do anything the rest of the year. So when I talk to the courtyard brand, I'm like, why are, if we're gonna be authentic, and we're gonna be, we have this great partnership with the NFL, let's create content year round and keep that conversation going. But I think that idea of that campaign, that's what we're trying to kill, is that we're always on. It's no longer one month, two month, three month. Uh, when we did Love Travels, same thing. It was a campaign for six months. Um, we got a lot of great engagement. The, the brands that were involved, said, oh, look at all these likes and shares we got on Facebook. And I said, well, okay, that's great, but let's actually go look at the comments. And all the comments, uh, Tim Howard was in it, one of the, the celebrities involved. Everyone's like, Tim Howard's so hot with all his tattoos. That was all the, and I said, that has nothing to do with the brand. It's great for Tim Howard, but it has nothing to do with us. So those thousand likes, shares don't mean anything to me. So the idea of the campaign, how do you just keep building an audience and, and giving them content you're around rather than this sort of on and off thing. And, and, and I think part of it is, uh, you know, brands are, uh, that's how sort of the industry started. That's how media is bought. There's planning. Uh, we'll get a lot of, well, what's our, what's our content plan? The brands will ask. And I'll say, well, we might have a great idea come in tomorrow. You can't, you can't plan your content. I mean, you can sort of say we're going to do four films and two TV shows and some webisodes, but it's not a traditional campaign where you can plan it out. So this isn't just brand as publisher. This is brand as channel. Almost like programming a cable channel, right? You're, you're, you're yeah, it is. It's, it's you're, us being a media company. Right. Um, right. So um, very interesting and, and quite brave. Other questions? How are you sourcing uh, your talent? And then how are you, if, as your talent produces content for you on their own, how are you managing the quality control around that to make sure that it, it meets within your brand standards or you're not? You're just trusting them to do that. Uh, we use our direct relationships that we have. Coming out of Los Angeles, I know have relationships with a lot of these uh, YouTubers. We partner with um, the agencies, talent agencies. Um, like I said, all the influencers, before they create content, they come to our headquarters, they learn about the brand, they know sort of what the brand voice is, all of that. But after that, we, um, we kind of set them free. And, and they have this sort of their you know, guidelines of what to do and what not to do. Um, but you put a lot of trust in them, and they appreciate that, and that's how we have these top influencers partnering with us, because they say, it's so cool, brand finally gets it. You're not trying to shut, you're not saying, hey, put my logo in there for five seconds. Right. Like, they just, and, and they appreciate that we just let them do what they do best. 
And um, you know, naturally, you get that it's Marriott's involved, whether they say it at the top or it comes from our channel or whatever it is. Um, but again, it's not about the brand first. And it's about question, great storytelling. To her question, are you killing all the brand campaigns, or are there still, are you are you going to over time sort of phase those out, or will they live side by side as part of your sort of annual content? Um, we are. Uh, if I could, I would all of them, but it's massive. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, leading creative for 19 brands is there's stuff that slips through. Right. Um, we have some great. Uh, you know, Marriott Hotels does a great job on social media. Right. We have other brands that need a lot of help. Um, so we're, we're, we are shifting. Um, you know, I, I say when I do presentations, why are we spending $3 million on a TV spot that no one's going to watch? Right. Let's shift that to content marketing, which, by the way, is a lot cheaper to do. Right? It's a two-way conversation. You can build an audience, and then you drive commerce. Rather than this spot that someone watches, they skip over it. Unless you can actually create a 30-second spot that people want to watch. So um, Lincoln did a great job with Matthew McConaughey. It got people's attention, right, with their MKC model. Um, people Googled that ad. Some might argue that wasn't necessarily positive, but. Right. Well, the sales were up 17% for that brand, and it's the brand they almost killed. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea that you you. So we we did a Viagra spot for Fiat, in in the, in the same show. It's a, it is a question of reach. But, but I understand what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, the idea that, it, look, it's all content. Like, it's right. not that we're not going to do TV. TV's great for awareness. Right. But if you're going to spin and create a spot, create content that actually gets people's attention that's different. And that's what was, you know, it drew people in. Sure. And then when they went to Google, that ad, they had all this other content sitting there waiting. And then all the late night shows did parodies. Of, I mean, it was great advertising for them. Other questions? Yes. You. Yes. sell into the business versus like very direct response metrics? Um, no. <laughs> Your answer is no. And I, I think we're, um, we are lucky that we have brands and brand marketers that just get it and understand it. Um, so it, this is probably the only time in my career where I can have it this easy. It's not, um, we're literally, they're just like, okay, show us what this looks like. And they're along for the ride. Um, so, you know, they do come from traditional marketing, so they want to know ROI and all that stuff, right? Um, but I show them, okay, instead of this measurement, now we're going to look at views or engagement and how that translates. There were other questions up here? Yes. Can you paint a picture, Ryan Pamplin from Extreme Reach, uh, can you paint a picture of what a successful execution looks like and, you know, what is the success rate? Because certainly not every single piece of content is, is going to blow up. So, you know, what percentage of it's working for you? What kind of results is it driving? How is it working? How are you actually, you know, proving that and measuring that? Um, I mean, for us, uh, and every brand's different, we are in just the, the um, lifting and shifting perception stage right now and getting people talk about it. So if you look at the comments on Two Bellman trailer on YouTube, it's, uh, again, so cool that Marriott's doing this. Um, I really like the content. Um, those are the comments that we want. People not only talking about the creative, but they're talking about the brand and associating it. And we see that as again on Snapchat and other, um, I'm gonna say campaigns, other things we're doing on social, people talking about how great it is and refreshing that we're providing value to them, making them laugh, informing them, solving a problem. Got time for one more? I've, how much, you kind of started to allude to this earlier, and I'm really, I'm Nikki Daku from Horizon Media. How much of the content, like the studio build and this strategy is a shift in investment or something that incrementally they're willing to invest in? It's uh, both. So we have a separate content fund um, that we uh, fund all of our creative from. Uh, we also work with the brands as we shift their dollars um, as well from traditional into digital and um, creative and content. So it's a, this year and planning was the first time that we're doing that. Um, so it, it, it's both of them. Um, I, I think if you're going to do this, it's important to set up a separate fund so you can just do content and then show people. Uh, with Two Bellman, uh, we just did it. JW, the brand, was not involved till the very end. I said, hey, we're doing a film. Your brand's involved. Here's the script. Is, is it a line, right? It's not nothing that's going to ruin the brand, okay. And then two months, three months later, I came back with the film. I kept them in the dark intentionally because I knew 
if they wanted to get involved, they were going to start mucking it up and it, making it all about the brand. <laughs> and so now they're very excited. You know, the trailer has a million views um, and over, and uh, so now they get it. But sometimes you just kind of have to go off and do stuff and break the rules and then show people the results. We're going to squeeze one more in. Robert Benev from Hub Life uh, Predictive Technologies. Um, this is an interesting scenario that you guys are, uh, I guess, looking into exploring and actually doing. And it's interesting to, to me and some of the people that uh, I deal with because there's this huge transition that's happening within the overall entertainment business where content uh, uh, carriers, the Amazons and Netflix of the world, are basically buying studios or becoming studios of their own right to produce their own content. Uh, Alibaba is looking at buying Lionsgate Studios. So do you see this, and not just for JW Marriott, but do you see this trend in companies becoming their own production houses or sort of a mini studio for content production so they can control it? Uh, yeah, I think, I, look, I think all of us, uh, every brand is a media company. All of us are media companies. Uh, you know, us individually on social, we're posting things on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever it is. We are all, whether we recognize it or not, choosing what to post and what to say. Right? And you're posting different things on each platform. You're a media company. You're creating content. There's a brand you're putting out. So brands have that opportunity to do the same thing. It's about what, what space do they want to own. GE does a great job. Like, you know, GE makes a lot of different things. IBM as well. They right. focus on innovation. Yep. That's their thing, education. Mm -hmm. It's finding sort of what's your niche and what's authentic for you to own and, and create content around that. So last question, and then we'll let you go. Um, and I'm sure you're going to be around, right, so people can follow up with questions. Yep. What, um, what advice do you have for people in the room who want to endeavor to, to get something like this going? Where should they start? And, you know, what, uh, and how, do they, how do they position this to, uh, to the CMO or the rest of the C-suite? Um, I, I think part of it is that you just have to do it. Right? Not ask permission. And, and really um, you know, tell the story that at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what business you're in, we're all in the people business. Right? And you connect with people and you build relationships with people that provide value to you. Right? So brands have that opportunity. Um, so I'd say it's sort of identifying at whatever scale you can do it, one project and go do it. Um, okay. You gotta have that permission. Before you know. you're all in. Yeah, before you're all in. I mean, it's a, it's a big step. We were bold, we were investing, we've got mm -hmm. Uh, you know, 65 people at headquarters that are part of my team and continent teams as well. Um, but, you know, that, that's bold, but we, we're all in. Not all brands are going to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but again, for us, it's realizing, look, we know that traditional marketing isn't working, so why not try this? And this, we believe that content is the way to connect with people. It's that emotional connection. That's the new transaction, that emotional connection with the brand, and then we can ask for the sell. How about a hand for the bravery of JW Marriott Corporation? Thank you, David, for your Thank time. Thank you. Appreciate it.